And so Sa'ad, he hears the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what he does is he says, he whispers the, the, the return salam so that the Prophet Sallallahu himself doesn't hear it. So what's the adab? If you, if, so, if, you, if, you, if you ask outside someone's home, you knock on the door, how many times are you supposed to do that before you leave? Three times, right? So the Prophet Sallallahu he again says, As-salamu alaykum wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. And then um, all three times, Sa'ad whispers a response. Wa alaykum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very quietly. So the Prophet can't hear. So after the third time, what happens? The Prophet he turns around to leave. And then after he turns around to leave, Sa'ad gets up and he <laughs> runs after the Prophet and he says, Bi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah, may my mother and father be sacrificed for you, O Messenger of Allah. You did not say salam to me except that I returned the salam. It was in my ear, I heard it, and I returned it, but I didn't want you to hear it. Why? So I can have three times the salam of the Prophet upon me. And so it's very interesting when you see the love of the companions of the Prophet said them. And for the Prophet, imagine it's like, come on, bro, like, right? That could be a reaction. Like, I'm a busy man, you know what I'm saying? Like, why are you wasting my time? But he, that wasn't his reaction. He he went with he went with him inside, and um, that's when we learned we learned um, uh, a beautiful hadith from the Prophet وسلم, where he says when he ate with him, you know, the famous du'a, "Akla ta'amukum al-abrar wa salat alaykum al-malaika wa tara alaykum al-sa'imun," that you say when you eat at someone's house. Um, so I wanted to share a story with you uh, about uh, uh, just a glimpse into the life of the companions with the Prophet uh, The companion's name is Al-Miqdad. Al-Miqdad was from Ahl al-Suffa. We mentioned Ahl al-Suffa yesterday briefly on the tour, I think. Ahl al-Suffa is the, the poor companions who stayed behind in the back of the masjid, which was originally the front of the masjid because the face of the Qibla was to Aqsa. And the, the, they had a roof that was um, date palm branches over them, but no walls on the side. So it's like an area where they would stay. And the, the scholars estimate around the permanent residents of Ahl al-Suffa were between 70 and 100 permanent residents there. And then every now and then you would have people like delegations would come and stay there and whatnot. Um, so al maqdad he says, one time I came with two of my companions to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says that we had lost our ability to, uh, ability to see and hear out of severity of hunger that we were in. We were in so much hunger that we couldn't see or hear. And so he says, we presented ourselves to the companions, to the Prophet and the companions, and, and no one, to the companions, and no one had anything to provide for us. Like, presented me, we were hungry. And so, and the reason why, it was because everyone was in a similar situation. There was very few people who were very well off. Um, and so they went to the Prophet And so Prophet said, come with me. And they went, to the, they went to his house. And they found that there were three, and Prophet didn't know this, there were three sheep there. And so he says, we will take milk and we will share, we'll put it in a, in a, in a bowl. And the four of us will share the milk that it produces every single day. And so the three companions would drink their share of the milk. And the Prophet ﷺ would come at night and he would drink his share at the end. And so that was their, their method of practice until one day al maqdad is sitting there. And this is their meal for the day. You know, a, a portion of a, a bowl of milk. That's their meal for the day. And so he says, I, began, I drank my portion. And then I began to think that the Prophet ﷺ he, he's going around to the house of the Ansar, the homes of the Ansar. And they are serving, they're hosting him. So they're going to serve him something. So he, he doesn't really need this last portion of milk. And so that day he said, he says, Shaitan came to me and said, why don't you drink the portion of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Because of this, he's, he's getting this food anywhere, other, other places. So he said, he drank it. And he says, as soon as the milk, it wasn't like, in his, you know when you feel the cold going down your chest? So it wasn't there yet. He said, once it like settled in my stomach, بطني, he says, Shaitan الشيطان. الشيطان made me regret what I did. And he says, What did you do? You drank the portion of the Prophet ﷺ? He's going to come and he's going to make dua against you and your dunya and your akhirah is destroyed. And so he says, I lie down to sleep. This is that night. And he, his, his blanket, which was his clothing, his, 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 his cloth that he would wear, if he covered his feet, his, he- his head would be uncovered. And if he covered his head, his feet would be uncovered. And so he's saying, I'm lying down. I'm trying to cover myself. I can't. 
and my, my mind is running a thousand miles an hour. It's like, what's going to happen? And he's waiting for the Prophet to come, as was his usual pattern. And he's saying, and I can't sleep. And subhanAllah, and he said, and my two companions who did not do what I did, they're sleeping soundly. <laughs> they drank their portion of milk and they're asleep now. And he says, and subhanAllah, by the way, before we continue, how many times do we sleep upon sin and our minds have no problem? We have the most comfortable sleep. He, he drank a small portion of milk. I don't know if you even can call it a sin. And his, his mind is running a thousand miles an hour. Right? And the fear. The fear of what will happen if Allah takes him to account for what he did. And so something to think about. We, are, we should never feel comfortable or get comfortable with anything, any mistakes that we do that are become habitual or normal to us. It should never be the case. And so he says the Prophet ﷺ came in. Now the Prophet ﷺ, what he would do is he would, so does the 70 to 100 companions who are sleeping in, in the back of the masjid, right? So he says when he would come at night, he would give salam, but he would say he would do it in a voice that the one who was sleeping will not be awoken from the salam and the one who is awake will hear it. And so he gives his salam, and then he prays two rakahs, and then he goes to drink his milk, as was his practice. And so when he goes to the container of milk, he uncovers the milk, the, the, the bowl, and he finds that the milk is, the bowl is empty. And so then he looks up to the sky and he raises his hands. Now Miqdad is watching all of this, and he's saying, now he's going to make dua against me, and I am destroyed. Right? He's, he's, just like, he's just watching all of this. Prophet doesn't know he's awake. And the Prophet he makes dua and he says, Allahumma at'im man at'amani wasqi man saqani. Oh Allah, feed the one who feeds me and give drink to, to the one who gives me drink. So Maqdad hears this and he jumps up and the cloth that he was trying to hide under, he wraps it around his waist and he grabs his knife and he goes straight to where the three sheep that were at the house of the Prophet sallallahu and he says, I am going to be the one who's in the receiving end of this dua. If I can slaughter one of these sheep and give it to the Prophet, I will be the one who Allah will feed because I fed the Prophet and be given drink because I gave drink to the Prophet And so he jumps up and he goes to the, the, the sheep and he says, and subhanAllah, after it had already been milked, he finds that, he finds that it, all, of, all three of them, subhanAllah, their udders are full again. And so he finds the biggest bowl that they had never had any hope for of filling up with milk. And he goes in there and he fills it till the top, until the froth of the milk is on the top of the bowl. And then he comes to the Prophet ﷺ and he presents to him the bowl of milk. And the Prophet ﷺ sees this, right? So the pattern is he comes and there's only a fourth of the milk left and he drinks. And now he comes and it's empty. And then Miqdad comes with, with the, the, the milk and it's a, a full bowl. And so the Prophet says, to sharabakum layla. Have you drank your portion tonight? So what is Baghdad going to say? He doesn't answer the question. He says, Ya Rasulullah, ashrab. Oh, Messenger of Allah, just drink. So the Messenger of Allah begins to drink. And then he gives the bowl, just as they're normal. You share, you share the portion. He gives the bowl to Baghdad. Baghdad again says, Ya Rasulullah, ashrab. And he gives him a second time, and then a third time, until he says, until I felt comfortable, the Prophet ﷺ completely satisfied his hunger and thirst. And then he says, that, that's when it dawned upon him, that I got the dua of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. And so he says, I began laughing so hard, uncontrollably, that I fell on the ground laughing. And the Messenger of Allah is just watching him. And he's just like, so atika ya miqdad, like this... Tell me what's going on here. There's, 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 there's a story behind this. And so Miqdad tells him everything that happened. He says, oh, the whole thing. And so the Prophet he tells him that, SubhanAllah, he says, why don't we wake up our two companions and share with them the blessing that we just had. And Miqdad says, oh, Messenger of Allah, if you drink and I've drank, I don't care who else after that, whoever drinks, it's okay. Um, and so they did the, the companions drank from it. So subhanAllah, I just wanted to share this story to, to mention a few things. One, to give you a glimpse into the relationship with the companions in the Prophet And the, 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 the lifestyle that many of them, the majority of them lived. When he says in the beginning of the narration, 
that I presented myself to the companions and no one would accept me, it's because of hunger. Abu Huraira, you know we're talking about the Rawda. Abu Huraira would say that I would be between the mimbar of the Messenger of Allah and the Hujrat of the Messenger of Allah and he says I would fall down unconscious from how severely hungry I was until people would come and they would put their foot on my neck to check if I'm alive, to check if I'm conscious, to check if, I'm, if I've, I've gone a little crazy or not. And he says, ma mi bin junoon, ma bi illa al -ju It wasn't that I was crazy, it wasn't that I was, it's that I was just starving. That's how severe my situation was. And so the companions lived that life and subhanAllah, despite that, you find the stories of generosity that we hear all the time, like we talked about yesterday during the walking tour. And the, and the level of sacrifice and love that they had for the Prophet of Allah Wasallam, And to get anything that they can from the dua of the Messenger of Allah. The eagerness of Sa'ad ibn Ubadah to make the Prophet say salam three times. And the eagerness of, of Miqdad that once the Prophet made that dua, I want to be the one receiving that dua. And so when we know the Messenger of Allah Wasallam says, and these are just some basic quick things to wrap up inshaAllah. That after the Adhan, if you say the dua, Allahumma rabba hadhi da'wati tama wa salat al-qa'ima. I will intercede for you on the day of judgment. If we know that the Prophet ﷺ says that he will be waiting for, the, for us, his brothers, when he sits with the companions and he says, I wish I could see my brothers. And they said, aren't we your brothers? Oh, Messenger of Allah said, no, you are my companions. My brothers come after me. They believe in me, but they haven't seen me. And he says, and I will be waiting for them at the held of the Messenger of Allah on the day of judgment. And he says, how will, they, how will you recognize those who you have never met before? His ummah, you and I, how will the Messenger of Allah see us on the day of judgment and know that we were believers in him and, and his message? And he says that they will, my ummah will come on the day of judgment with their faces and their limbs bright from Athar al sujood, from the, from the, the remnants, uh, from Min uh, Athar al wudu, from the, uh, the remnants of wudu. And so they will be given nur on the places that they used to wash, and I'll recognize them. When the Messenger of Allah says that there will be people who will be driven away from my pond, those who invented affairs in the religion after, after me. We hear all these things and we have to recognize that there, there is certain quali qualities and qualifications that we must try and, and bring into our life so that we can receive the dua of the Messenger of Allah, receive the drink from the Messenger of Allah, be in companionship of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of judgment. Right? And that's what the Sahaba, um, their ultimate goal, their ultimate desire was that. And inshallah ta'ala, throughout this journey, we're going to be sharing stories with you too that really bring that to light and bring that to, to heart, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum.